Today on In The Wood Yard, I'm gonna talk about two companies that are awesome that I've been working with. You gotta see this, this is service. Here we go. For those of you that have been around for more than a minute, you have seen my new baby dumper. This trailer was given to me uh, by a combination of thumb trailers in Michigan and N&N &N trailers. They basically gave this to me because I bought a trailer from them and I've been done doing a lot of videos and it has helped them sell a lot of trailers. Awesome trailer it is a galvanized trailer that uh, is just fantastic and I've got two of them now I got this one and then the bigger one the bigger one is a 6x12 this is a 5x10 this one has a 7,000 pound maximum the other one is 10 this one can haul about if I remember correctly right around 4,500 pounds and the other one can haul uh, right around 7,000 maybe a little bit more somewhere in that range because of the weight of the trailer and that kind of stuff so they noticed that when I put my sideboards on to extend this up a little bit more so I could haul more wood, that my, when I loaded up full, that my tarp didn't quite get into the grooves there. And so Thumb Trailers said, hey, send us a, uh, a little link to that video and we'll get it to the company and see what they can do. Well, I totally forgot about it, probably about a week and a half, two weeks ago. And I thought about it just yesterday. I thought, you know, I should send them that link because maybe they'll let me know how much it is for me to buy a longer tarp. Well, yesterday I come home and there's a box from NN that Thumb Trailers obviously got a hold of them and said, hey, he needs a longer tarp. I got a longer tarp. So we're gonna change out this one for the new one. I'll show it to you right now. Here's the new one. Uh, this came in a box yesterday, so it's bigger. On here it says that it is 60 inches wide, which is a five footer, and it is 168 inches long. So we're gonna find out, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be long enough, because obviously they added to this. I said if it was a foot longer, it'd be awesome. So we'll see. We're gonna open it up, we're gonna take the other one off, we're gonna put this one on, so that's pretty cool. The other thing that's really nice about this is if you get one of their trailers, and say after you know three, four, five, six, seven years, however long you have your trailer, if the tarp starts to get tattered, which can happen because this is, uh, it's not exactly steel, uh, with a lot of materials rubbing on it, you could easily tear it, get a hole in it, whatever. So they're replaceable, which I assumed they could be, but there it is, they sent it to me. Never even said a word, they just did it. Not too many places have that kind of service anymore nowadays. So we're gonna take off the old one, put on the new one right now. Okay, so I'm gonna take off the old one. So basically this is the lock that locks the, uh, the crank in place. So we're gonna take this off. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take off uh, the conduit. There's a piece of pipe they have in here. I'm gonna detach this and I think it's just one screw in the, yeah, one bolt in the middle here. And I'm gonna take off the bungees and put those uh, on the end of the other one. So we're gonna undo this whole thing right now and get to work. So what holds it in place is just this one, looks like a leg bolt or a nut here. I think it, yeah, it just goes, screws into the, the actual pipe. I already loosened it with a wrench. So it's gonna turn this out and that's all that holds it in place because it doesn't take much to hold it. It goes probably through to the other side, I'm guessing. It's got some washers on here, don't wanna lose those. So let's get it out of here and see what it is. There we go. So yeah, it's just a self-threading, self-tapping screw there that goes into that so we're going to set that over here and uh we're going to pull this one out it should just slide out of here there we go that one's out we'll put that up here oh there she goes she's rolling away on me okay it stopped and then we're going to take these bungees off and these they got crimped on here so i'm going to grab a players and we're going to take the bungees off because I, I do want, want those left on here just in case I have to put something extra on. So we're gonna take those off. Well, right now there's about, I don't know, 20 mile an hour winds. So hopefully you're not getting a lot of wind noise. I do have my uh, mic on with the, uh, the wind stopper. So hopefully that is making a difference. If I can get this off here, there's, I got part of it off. Trying to open this up a little more. There we go. That way I can get the new one on. I get it on the new one. So we're gonna put that right there. Take that one off, put it right there. See, I just link them on here like this because I have been using this in the meantime while the tarp was a little small. All right. 
Now, we're gonna take this old tarp off. We're gonna unroll it. So we're gonna unroll this, and then I think it's just bolted on the inside, if I remember right. Whoopsie. Set these up here. I'm gonna save this tarp just in case we have to put it over something on a different load someday. So yeah, all this is is, looks like four of the same self tapping. Can you guys see that all right? Yeah. I just grabbed this crescent wrench because it's the only one I had in my truck just to loosen them up. Once I get it started here, I should be able to just turn it out with my fingers. Come on, get down there. Oh no, it's pretty tight actually. Here, no, I'm it set, but ah, this is not going to take too long doing it this way. I know some of you guys can't do anything without power. Well, I still can. All right, I'm going to take the next one out. It's right here. It only has four. Oh, that was loose. Look at that. I have to tight. Make sure I get it tight back on tight. That's loose. It's just barely on there. So I didn't need any tool for that one. And we got a couple down here on the far end. She's coming off. There we go, last one. All right. So there is the old tarp. I'm just gonna throw that over here for now. And then we're gonna open up the new one. I'll stuff that in here. Hope. Looks like it just lost a bolt. Let's see, make sure I get the right end here. That's the right width. I'll we'll open it up here. There's four there. There's four on this end. Oh no, this is the uh, this is the bottom end of the, the back end because it's got the pocket here for the pipe. I might as well stick that in right away. And then it's in there. Set that down here to keep it out of the way. Oh yeah, it looks longer. Awesome. Okay, we're just gonna leave it there for now. Or maybe the wind's gonna move it. It is windy. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is put this one in. I'm just gonna get these in, kind of started with my fingers. Just to get them to kind of hold. This one's got a little rust on it because it is not galvanized. A little bit of space on that one. There we go. There's two. There we go. One more. Get on there, Mr. Crescent. Can only get about a half a turn. I think it's stripped. It just keeps spinning in place and it seems to be all the way in. I'm going to have to go get a, I'm going to stick a piece of wire in, do it the old farmer fix, put a piece of wire in, then put it in, it'll tighten up around itself. So I go grab a piece of wire. Okay, so here's my solution. Got a little piece of wire and this is my uh, wire that I use when I put the bins together. It's electrical fence wire and it does not rust, so that's why I'm using it. So I'm just going to stick it into the hole like a, a Z. Have a little lip fold over like that, and that way I can put the screw in and it should stay right in there. It should self-tighten. It should just go in and tighten up. It's all right, I can feel already. It's already tighter. Just hold that there. That's not working. It's just spinning in the hole. Like I need to convince it. I think I talked it into it. Now let's see. Yeah, it's better. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, it was just spinning when it was on the cutting part and it wasn't, th the thread wasn't catching, but now she's getting tight. Yeah, it's more like it. Yep, that's it. All right, one down. Now let's move down to this one. And this one, 
was pretty tight, so I don't think I need to put any wire in this one. Unless when I tighten it up now, it strips out, but I think it'll be okay. I think we'll be just fine with this one. Feels like it's... All right, so I made another one. Stick that in. And I'll grab the screw. Try to get that started. I'm going to convince this one to go in too. There we go, got it started. Now she should go in. Oh yeah, she's biting. She's biting good. Ah, we're cooking with oil. That's tight. All right, two down, two to go. So I made a decision just to put these in right away, just to get it so it's nice and tight. So no sense having them get loose later. And again, I'm gonna convince the guy, guy to get in there a little better. Get it to where the threads are. I just can't get enough torque on it. Much tighter too. Whoop, till you drop the wrench. There we go. Snug is a bug and a rug, whatever that means. Now we're gonna put this last one in. I already made a, a little uh, tightening wire. Put this one in. And we're going to convince this one to go in. Oh, <laughs> she's going in. Before it was just spinning on the uh, wire going in circles. Now we're tightening it up. Had to get it to where the threads are biting. Oh yeah. Way, way better than before. Or as my dad would say, much more better. Here we go. Now they're tight. All right. Let's go see how it works. All right. Oh, we'll slide her down. And uh, oh yeah, lots longer. Lots, lots longer. I can tell already. Yeah, it's considerably longer. So it means if we go up and out, I must have made this like 18 inches longer, maybe two feet, probably two feet longer. Awesome. So now it's plenty big. So all I got left to do now is put the, uh, the screw in, which is down here, into this end one. I just gotta find where the, the hole is. It's gotta be. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is tighten this up, and that way I can get it in there. There we go. She's pretty. Okay, so I just got to find where that hole is. It's somewhere right in here. And I'm going to have to go through this membrane they have here. They've got a, they got a extra strap in the middle there for strength, but I can't feel where the hole is. I know it's right in the middle here, somewhere. There it is, right there. I can feel it, it's right there. I think I can just punch through. This one I'm not worried about because it was super tight before. So I think we'll be good. Should just turn right in. 
socket would have been easier, but we're getting her done. This is not that big of a job. There we go. I don't want to strip it. I just want to get it snug. That's good. She's snug. Awesome. You know, I just put the bungees back on. And those I'm going to crimp on. So this one's going to go right here. This one's going to go down on that end. This one's going to go right here. And this one. This little piggy's gonna go to market right here. There we go, that one's on. This one I'm gonna crimp both sides. Get that one. Get that one. I'll do the same on this one. There we go. Right. And then these, I'm just gonna clip into the ends here because I don't need them hanging on there. So I'm just gonna crisscross them over the top of each other here, like this. There we go, they're out of the way. All right, let's crank her up and see how she fits on the other end here. So like I said, when I was first doing this, I figured that what I would be able to do, because I was worried about these being in the way, but when you pull it out, you can just put one in there, put in there, and then it just sits on these boards on the side, the extended sides, and it'll just slide across that when I roll it up. Just gonna see if it doesn't ball up too much here. I was worried about the size of it. Oh. Not a problem, plenty of room. Got a whole inch, There's a whole inch to spare here. I'll show you. So you can see here, got plenty of room. I can get my whole hand underneath there. It didn't ball up too big at all. And matter of fact, if I crank on this, I can get it down. So plenty of room there. I'll show you the other side. Plenty of room here. So I got a good inch or so right there, space between where this would hit and uh, plenty of room. So, absolutely awesome. Nice. So like I said, these guys have been just great to work with. Um, and before they gave me this trailer, I bought a different one. Same, same company, uh, N&N, &N, same, same place. I bought it from Thumb Trailers and then they gave me this to, to use and show you guys. And, Apparently they've sold a whole bunch of trailers because of the videos I've done. So I like it when everybody wins. I like it when I can do something good for someone else. They do something good for me. You guys get to see the products. So you know if they are good or bad or ugly, whatever they are. And uh, these guys have been just awesome to work with. So Thumb Trailers in Sandusky, Michigan. And uh, two brothers there that run the place. They're awesome. Give them a call if you're interested in a trailer. Um, the galvanized trailers obviously are fantastic because they don't rust. Uh, they hold their value tremendously. You really can't lose on buying one. Uh, there are guys I know that have bought uh, trailers um, five, six, seven, eight years ago, N&N &N trailers. Uh, one guy in particular, he wanted to upgrade. He told me that uh, he had a smaller one and wanted to get a bigger one. And he made money on his trailer that he bought six or seven years ago, something like that. Sold it, it increased in value. He made a couple thousand dollars, bought a bigger trailer. So good stuff is the way to go. Um, I have always found that, you know, the old saying of buy once, cry once, stands true when it comes to good equipment. Um, get the stuff that's gonna hold its value, increase in value, uh, hold up so that you don't have to constantly be replacing it. Um, to me, the old fashioned, that's what I call them, rust buckets, steel trailers that are black that most everybody used to have and now people are starting to get aluminum and galvanized trailers and higher quality, better painting trailer, better painted trailers because a lot of the trailers out there, uh, they say old oh, powder coated. Well, what that means is they kind of wave the, the paint over the top of the, uh, 
the steel. And then uh, if you live where I do in the Midwest, uh, the rust belt as everybody calls it, which it is because we drive on calcium chloride and salt all winter long on the roads. These things are not these, but the old fashioned trailers, the, the black ones, they just rust out. Um, yeah, they last for a little while, but if you drive in the winter time, if you're in a area where there's road salt, they aren't gonna last long at all, unless you constantly are working on them and sanding or blasting them and then repainting or you know putting new metal on. To me, it just isn't worth it buying one that's gonna fall apart on you. Um, these are made really well. So really all I gotta worry about now is uh, the moving parts. So all I gotta worry about is the bolts, the hanging parts, you know, the things that connect all the uh, hardware underneath. Make sure that's all in good condition and that uh, nothing's wearing through because it can happen over a lot of time after a lot of use hauling like I do. So this is the baby dumper, the one that I just put the new uh, cover on. And uh, like I said before, awesome little trailer. This fits two face cords or two thirds of a cord. The only thing I have left to do is to mount the spare tire and get that on here. And we're gonna mount it right here. Somehow we're gonna get a bracket. I just haven't had taken the time to do it yet. For now, I've just been throwing the spare tire into the truck when I use it so that I've got it with me because the best way to not get a flat tire is to have your spare with you at all times. If you don't have a spare, you're probably gonna get a flat tire. So yeah, this trailer is a 7,000 pound trailer. It's got twin 35, 100 pound axles on it so it is a uh, dual axle and uh, the trailer is a 7,000 pound capacity I think the trailer itself weighs like 20 3 2400 pounds something like that so there it is I'm gonna show you the bigger trailer now so this one like I said is the uh, 5 foot by 10 foot and it's awesome I like it a lot and this one here is the bigger trailer this is the 6 by 12 and it does have dual axles too. There's twin 5,000 pound axles, so it's 10,000 pounds total. Much bigger trailer, uh, much higher. Uh, it can fit easily a full cord in a quarter. I'm full cord in a third in here. And uh, if I stack it, I can get five face cords or a full cord in two thirds in here if I stack it. Um, so yeah, it's a much bigger trailer absolutely awesome i bought this brand new like i don't know two years or so ago now and uh works out absolutely excellent and uh really like it a lot both of them have the, the uh telescoping front uh jack hydraulic cylinder lift that's what i'm trying to say and uh they work out really well so very 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 nice trailers i like them a lot there you go the fix is done for today Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another exciting video. Tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. I'll be back. We're going to split some wood. Come on back. Good night, Irene.